Hello everyone and welcome to another uh, Business Perspectives. Today I am joined by the lovely Kelly J. Russo of Kelly J. Russo Photography. Um, she is a pet photographer based over in Houston, Texas. So today we're going to have a chat with Kelly, find out about her business, her passion for animals and what's led her to where she is now as a pet business owner or as we like to say at Book Your Pet, a petpreneur. So <laughs> without further ado, I will hand over to Kelly and I will ask you Kelly as your first question introduce yourself tell us a bit about you your business where your passion for animals came from fill us in about who is Kelly and what is Kelly Jay Russo Photography. Sure, sure. Uh, it was nice to meet you uh, this is Toby he's one of my four dogs uh, so he he's making an appearance today um, but I am a pet photographer, like you mentioned, in Houston, Texas. So I specialize in mainly dogs and also horses. And I've been in business maybe going on three years now. So I started my business right before the pandemic hit, <laughs> which is not the greatest time probably to start a business, but that's what I did and uh, never looked back. So things actually have been really great. Um, as far as my background, I grew up in South Texas on a cattle ranch, so I was always around animals growing up, um, but I've always loved photography too. And throughout uh, my careers before photography, uh, before I became a full-time photographer, I worked in uh, wildlife conservation organizations and nonprofits, so um, thinking that's what I wanted to do, but photography was always a part of my job even when I was working in those organizations. And then finally I got to a point where this is just really what I wanted to do full time. So uh, I decided to take the leap, um, start my own petpreneur of business and become a full-time photographer back uh, three years ago. Amazing. So it's really been a combination of the passions that you've had throughout your life for, for pets and for photography. What was it about that point three years ago that made you take that leap? Was there a particular trigger that, that happened or what changed the mindset with where you were at to making you wanna go now is the right time? Um, it, was, it was a very hard decision. Uh, one, I was working full time, um, but I was in my spare time, I volunteered a lot with dog rescues, uh, photographing an, you know, new animals and helping them get adopted through photography. and. It, that was becoming more and more frequent, um, spending more and more time doing that and then getting requests from people to photograph their dogs too. Um, and then coupled with that, I guess you could say I kind of had a couple bad experiences with my full-time job at the same time. So, you know, all of that kind of culminated to uh, to me just saying, you know what, I think now's the time. I'm going to just strike out on my own and give it a go. Um, and luckily I had some good foundations in place, so it helped helped me launch successfully and keep things going and gaining momentum. And can you tell us a little bit more about what those foundations were that you, you, you just mentioned there? Sure, uh, so before I started my business, I had signed up for some academy, business academy, so I knew like what kind of things I needed to have in place to have um, to be legally sound as a business and then to have like my pricing correct and you know my mindset correct to be working for myself uh, so that that really helped uh, to kind of have a roadmap in place whenever I decided to take the leap and go full-time amazing and um, is that something that you would recommend to other people to do if, they, if they're thinking about jumping into a career as a petpreneur do you do you think that's something that everybody should take part in yeah, I mean, I think you should definitely do your research and find out what's involved in starting a business, you know, what all the tax and, and, and liabilities and, you know, legal things you have to have in place. Um, but at the same time, I also feel you shouldn't get too hung up on all those little details because in, in my experience, action is more important than perfection. So even imperfect action or if you're not if you don't have all pieces of place, like you don't have an email newsletter, you don't have a website, all those things, um, it's better just to get started as much as you can um, and then add those things in as you go or perfect them over time as you, you know, grow. 
absolutely I, I completely agree it's what it's one of those things where if if you never start then it's never going to happen whereas you can take the small steps and, and those small actions they'll compound over time for you and yeah. those small actions will become bigger results over time so it's about taking those first steps and baby steps but eventually even if you take it one step at a time you're going to get to the top of the hill eventually exactly and you don't have to jump full time right away it, it can be something you start part time and you can just stay part time it really it's it's really individual how you set up your own business so don't compare yourself to everybody and have their success you know it takes time it really does there's there's that great saying talking about comparison that comparison is the thief of joy and i, I think you've hit the nail on the head there it's, it's all about a personal journey as a petpreneur isn't it yeah it really is like uh you know, you look at Instagram and social media and you see these, like I do anyway, you see amazing dog photos and you think, man, I'm just not that good. But really what you don't know is that person probably spent 10,000 hours perfecting that craft. So it's, it is a journey. Um, and I'm still on that journey and I'm nowhere near finished or where I want to be. You know, eventually it's just, you know, just staying with the, staying the course. <laughs> And so on that journey, where is it that you want to take it? Where do you want your business to grow to eventually in the next 12 months, you know, a couple yeah. of years? What, what is that journey looking like for you? Well, um, I, I don't know if it was just, I've heard from other photographers that this year has been a little tough for a lot of people in terms of, you know, just clients and business. I'm not sure if it's in the U.S., if it's, something with the economy or we had a heat wave here in Texas so most people aren't wanting to be outside photographing with their dogs um, but I'd like to see you know myself besides getting really regular clients and um, just comp you know regular bookings I'd like to get more involved in maybe perhaps um, local businesses and also maybe media in Houston is as someone who can provide information not just about photography and pets, but maybe uh, training or how to, you know, work with your pets or, you know, just more of a petpreneur in general. I guess that makes yeah, <laughs> we really say that. So at Book Your Pet, we're all about sort of helping petpreneurs make their businesses um, bigger, better, and more sustainable as well. And one of the things we always say about sustainability is being able to diversify your services. So as much as you are a pet, uh, photographer one of the great things about any petpreneur service is that they all sort of tie into each other so like what you're saying about training there and being able to advise um outside um counsel um to other businesses it all ties together because you'll have that training experience from being able to get the dogs to sit and pose and, and yeah. things like that so being able to diversify those services is a really great point as a petpreneur to to see that continued growth and, and carry on on that journey yeah and it it really is a community so there's other small petpreneurs here in houston that you know i'd like to partner with so we can promote each other's businesses and kind of just build that community because it's not all about the large you know pet stores you know there's a lot of local businesses and small train you know small business trainers and dog walkers and groomers and stuff that we can all support each other so I, I think that's something I'd like to work on more in the coming year is really getting those connections made. Absolutely. And uh, if you don't know already, Book Your Pet is actually launching um, a membership platform in the coming weeks. Um, and as part of that platform, it's all about building that sense of community as well. So it's not only what you said about um, giving the resource to help people with the, the things that you touched on, you know, like uh, the business structure and the, the financials and things we've got all of that resource but it's also about connecting business owners with each other um to support one another um and build that sense of a global community not just sort of like a localized but a global community of petpreneurs passionate pet people who who just want to see animals happy and healthy and well cared for in the world yeah that's exactly right that's exactly what i'd like to move toward as well so that's really exciting to hear and so going back to your photography side of things then, um, obviously you said you specialize in dogs and horses. How did you come about with those those two sides of the coin? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's kind of funny. So dogs have always been, you know, kind of my heart, my spirit animals. So I spent a lot of time photographing, like I said, rescue dogs and then my own dogs um, and just obsessed with, you know, creating some really memorable images. But then uh, 
I attended a workshop about pet photography and one of the speakers was talking about equine photography and she kind of went through a sample photo shoot and I just was thinking, I can do that. <laughs> uh, so I reached out to some friends and uh, who I knew had horses so like, you know, can I come out and photograph your horse and try it out? And they were more than happy to let me come out and practice. And they told all their friends and I kept doing more and more. And then I started offering that as a service um, in my business. And it's been really great because in the winter time in the spring, I mean, you know, in Texas, it gets really hot here. So in the, the cooler months is when I photograph dogs the most. But in the summer months when it's hot is when horses actually look their best because their coats are very uh, shiny and sleek. They've lost all their winter coat. So it kind of balances out where I do a lot of uh, horses during the summer and the off months uh, that I don't do dogs and then dogs the rest of the year. So that's, it's that's great. really something that I, I never would have thought of as, as yeah. sort of making it a, an all year round because you do get you know in in other photography professions like wedding photographers and, and things like that it, it does seem to be quite a seasonal vocation for a lot of yeah. people so ha, ha, being able to figure out how to make that a, an all year round profession i think that's really quite clever yeah, thank you <laughs> and so since becoming a full-time petpreneur what has been the most rewarding part of running a pet business for you? Oh gosh, um, probably being able to give my clients, you know, these moments in time with their their favorite and their favorite pet. Especially, I've had several clients who've reached out to me later that their, you know, their pet has passed on, and they're so grateful to have these images of their dog or their horse. Um, that they can look back on and kind of re relive those moments in time when you know they still have them with them so that's that's really rewarding to see and just to know how you know people are so emotional about their pets and just you know seeing their reaction when they see these pictures when i do a reveal it's just it makes me feel good to know that i'm making them happy that way and do you do those reveals in person with them uh well i started yes i do sometimes in person but a lot of times it's over zoom um because houston is a pretty large <laughs> city so sometimes you know clients are all over the place so it's a lot easier to do it over zoom and i do a, like a slideshow of music and i kind of watch their reactions while <laughs> they're looking so it's kind of fun <laughs> Amazing. And what what does a typical shoot kind of look like for you? Because I, I think, uh, again, going back to one of those classic sayings, a lot of people always say, I think, especially in like film and TV, um, never work with animals or children. <laughs> <laughs> so sort of combining the lens with the animals, how do you find that? Can it be a bit chaotic sometimes? Or do, have you developed particular methods to be able to get those perfect shots? How, how does a shoot normally take place? Great. Um yes to all those all those questions <laughs> uh you know the the best thing i can do is try and plan as much as possible so you know i have a planning call maybe more than one with the client and try and get to know their personality and also their pet's personality as much as i can uh, whether the dog's nervous around you know in new places or are reactive or has a thing about certain colored haired people or you know whatever it could be you know different things so i try and learn as much as i can and just um then i use that information to determine a location for the photo shoot so if the dog is reactive or really shy i try and find a place that's really quiet out of the way we may do an early morning versus an evening um so it's less people around um and then once we get to the session you know it, it runs pretty keep it in relaxed as possible and let the dog lead the way so i i have in my mind certain shots i want to get in certain places but really if the dog's not into it i'm not going to force them um and then i have lots of ways to get their attention with you know noisemakers or squeakers or treats or things like that uh, but sometimes you know if he just doesn't want to look at the camera that is totally fine <laughs> We can still really make beautiful images, um, you know, look him looking off into the distance or, or whatever. Um, plus, um, gosh, I think I lost my train of thought. Um, 
plus, you know, a lot of there's a lot of it's opportunistic, too, because like you don't know until you get out there that something really special might happen, especially when you have the owner and the dog together. And I try and capture those in between moments, too. So when they're not even posing or not even thinking about the camera, they're just like focused on each other. And that's when you get the really great pictures. Yeah. And I suppose with the, those not so staged images, they're the real ones that show the intimacy and the, the bond that they have between the pets and pet parents. And it really sounds like every shoot is a completely personalized service when it when it comes to what you're doing, which is fantastic because when people are booking with you, they know that their photos are going to be unlike any other photos. Um, sure. And it's great that you really listen to what the dogs are telling you as well as what their parents are telling you as well. Yeah, and uh, you know, I've done young dogs that are really active and I always tell my clients that I have a very fast shutter speed, so <laughs> they can be as wiggly as possible and I promise I will still get some pictures with them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you've obviously got a lot of experience and you you know all the tips and the tricks to, to capture those photos, but going back to when you started, what do you know now that you wish you'd have known then? Oh gosh. So much. <laughs> um, I guess specifically about photography, um, I wish I knew more about lighting and, and that kind of thing because photography is all about light and how it falls on your subject. So I wish back then I was more knowledgeable about seeing where the light falls and so I can capture the best image. Um, that way not rely so much on editing. Now I'm in the place where I can let the light in the camera use most of the heavy lifting so i don't have to edit that much i get it right as right as possible in cameras as i can um i also wish when i started out i had spent more time with the clients and learning more about their dogs you know i this is a process a workflow process that has evolved over time so in the beginning i wasn't as thorough maybe with some of my clients and getting to know them and those details before the session but as I am now like I really take the time now to kind of get to know them and you know really kind of create that experience and do you go through the same kind of process with the dog as you would with a horse or is, is there a, a different sort of um set of boxes that you you go through with the owners um when you're arranging those yeah. It's it's very similar uh, because some horses also have their quirks. So, you know, some things like I I usually for horses, I have an assistant uh, who's my husband and um, he we use different things to get the horses, you know, ears perked or for the horse to look a certain way. So I have to find out those, you know, I find out what the horse is sensitive to ahead of time because, you know, they may react. Every horse reacts differently to different stimuli and horses are huge animals and uh, we have to be more safety conscious you know with the big animals like that so i really try and make sure that we have everything in place the owners aware of what we're doing they can keep kind of keep tabs on what the horse is feeling and cues so they can tell us okay we need to take a break you know he's getting things like that so um yeah <laughs> Great. And you mentioned a, a little um, earlier that when you sort of started out, it started becoming uh, like friends would ask you to take pictures of, of their pets. And then it was friends of friends. And that sort of word of mouth trail led to the business building and growing. Um, so obviously that for you is a very powerful marketing tool. But are there any other sort of avenues that you, you've gone down in terms of the marketing route to, to get the name and the business out there to, to help it to grow? Yeah, uh, probably one of the biggest ways um, that's helped me grow is partnering with businesses. So I would go out and, and not necessarily all pet related businesses, but, you know, garden centers or even store, you know, like regular stores that may sell some pet products. But I just try to get my name out in front of a wider audience. So I try to partner with businesses as much as possible. Um, and then, the, you know, they help promote the event and then I can get email addresses and kind of grow my audience that way. Amazing. And so what advice would you give to somebody who's at the beginning of their journey as a pet printer now, whether they're not quite taking that leap and they're, they're just thinking about it or they've just jumped off that, that cliff edge and they're going for it? 
um, all guns blazing. What what sort of advice would you give them having been in their shoes three years ago? Well, it's it's a lot of work. Um, and, you know, I, that's, you, you know that, I guess, instinctively, but you don't realize that how much work it can be. And it's not like, you know, it's as a photographer, I thought I'm going to start my own photo business and I'm going to be photographing all the time. And really, you know, photography is about 20 percent of what I do. The rest is the business side. So you, you really can't neglect the marketing, um, pounding the pavement and making connections and and partnerships i mean that's just as important as the actual um service you provide so make sure you have a balance um as much as possible <laughs> absolutely and it, it is one of those things as you say where you don't quite realize how much admin does go into running a business especially when you're just a, a one person because you could be spinning so many plates all at the same time you know you're, you're not only a photographer but your finance your marketing your tech your everything um I think one of the great things about what we do at book your pet is our software is designed to kind of take that pressure off of the petpreneur so uh, uh, you know our live booking software it not only presents a place for people to come and find and book your services without having to do endless back and forth messaging but it markets to a new audience as well it has reporting features so it can take care of that admin it saves all of your pricing your packaging it's got so many features that help to take care of that side of things so you know it as much as the admin side is and can be daunting for new petpreneurs it's not something for them to to be fearful of i wouldn't say Exactly. I wish I had this tool when I first started. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm going to ask you to make a choice here. <laughs> if you could only photograph dogs or horses for the rest of your career, <laughs> which one would it be and why? Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> it's, oh, that's hard. Um, I guess I would. I think dogs have a slightly <laughs> tug at my heartstrings a little more um, just because I I just love dogs. Uh, you know, I don't personally own a horse at the moment, so maybe I'm leaning more toward dogs right now. Um, just they're so different in their personalities. And, you know, really what it is, too, is seeing that bond they, they have with their owners. I, I know horses do as well, but it seems like dogs are more expressive in their love so uh yeah i think it would have to be dogs <laughs> and can you think back is has there been a favorite photo shoot of yours or you know a favorite dog that you photographed who, who's been particularly you know excellent on the, the shoot set or is just sort of stolen your heart with the the doe eyes <laughs> <laughs> um Gosh, there's been quite a few. Um, obviously, the the ones that go the smoothest are the dogs that are really well trained and like will stay and sit and you know everything on command. But it's really fun to see the ones that are just happy with life in general. Um, there's been a few of those in my time as a full time photographer where they're just they're just happy to be outside. They're just happy to smell the grass. They're just happy to say hi to you. They're just, you know, they have so much joy. Uh, so those dogs are really fun to photograph because you never know what you're going to get. Um, it reminds me, like, one of the reasons I started my business was I told you I've, I've photographed rescue dogs and, and also my own dogs. So one of my dogs, her name is Harriet. She's kind of like that. She's got that personality where she's just joyful. And she's kind of my muse, and I, I practice on her new techniques all the time. So I guess really Harriet, my dog Harriet, is probably my favorite. <laughs> is Harriet around now? Is is she is she there yeah, to? She's I don't know if you can see her. She's asleep behind me. So. No, you won't disturb her. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that that's you're so right. Like I think the thing about dogs that I'm always in awe at is how appreciative they are of the world around them and it's, it's one of those things that always they're always there to pick you up no matter what's going on it, for them it, yeah. it's, it's just a dog's around and it just instantly makes you happy just seeing them wag their tail and, and enjoying nature and as you say just 
living their best lives. It's inspirational in a lot of ways, isn't it? <laughs> it really is. Yeah. And never get tired of, of looking at dogs or dog videos or dog pictures. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so obviously with all the different kinds of dogs and the horses that you meet, no two days can be the same. How do you deal with that as as a person are you the type of person who, who likes to have the variation or the, i know for myself i like a bit of variation but i also like a routine so how do you cope with like every day being completely different gosh um well having a um a workflow in my business is really helpful to keep things consistent and you know on track um and you, like you said, I, I do like the variety. And uh, like this weekend, I'm photographing a dachshund on Saturday and then a horse on Sunday. So it's always kind of, it's kind of fun to have that variety. But at the same time, I also know exactly where they are in my workflow and uh, how things are supposed to progress from start to end. So that that kind of routine, it helps keep me grounded. <laughs> And in terms of that workflow, are there any like particular systems that you use at, at the moment or how how is it that you organize your, your diary and your time? What how do you go about doing that? Um, so there's I use a variety of softwares, uh, but Trello is probably one of my biggest things that I use for almost everything. Um, I have set up boards for a client workflow from inquiry to photo session to finish. And then I also use that for marketing um, and also ideas and just things I need to get done. I can move things along a pipeline, basically have it set up. So that's probably one of the biggest things I use just to keep I'm, organized. I'm the same. So obviously I'm, I focus on marketing, but I've got hundreds of Trello boards, <laughs> all the different things. So I, I 100% am behind yeah. you on one. <laughs> <laughs> before I let you go tell us what's next for Kelly J Russo photography what what have you got coming up are there places people can come and find you and meet you and where can people find and follow you online as well if they want to make inquiries or see your work right thank um thanks for letting me give a shout out uh so my website's kellyjrusso.com and that's also my Instagram handle so you can always reach me there uh coming up i have a lot of seasonal sessions so even though we don't have a lot of seasons here in texas i am doing christmas and fall autumn -y type uh, events coming up so you can find out more about that on my website and other than that i'm just trying to you know get through the busy season of the rest of the year and then start planning for next year <laughs> do it all over again yeah exactly <laughs> be better, we hope yeah. Exactly. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Kelly, and everybody who's watching. As Kelly said, you can go and find her online and on uh, Instagram. Take a look at her portfolio and you'll be able to see some of her amazing work. And we will be spotlighting Kelly over the next two weeks as well across all of our platforms, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, newsletters, blogs, everywhere that you'll find Book Your Pet, you'll also find Kelly for the next two weeks. Um, and we look forward to showing you more of what she can do.